right, this this is what we're talking about. Uh, it's digitally generated, kind of random. Let's let's um, take a chance. Try another one. Um, if it says error, then I still have a job because I'm not a digital artist, or that's never how I thought of, of myself. I'm an IT guy, but um, Sydney runs a very, very small digital humanities operation, so the IT guy does the crawling under the desk to um, make things work and everything else, including uh, turning myself into uh, a digital artist, which um, oh, you can probably tell by my liking for grey. Uh, even my hair has finally got with the program. Um, I'm, I'm rather an unlikely digital artist. But here we go. And to be honest, I actually find quite a lot of the stuff that this strange program that I've been working on um, really, really beautiful. But I, I know something. I didn't put the beauty in there. So the question for me has always been, well, where did it come from? But um, let's just cover off um, where we started. So we started with... Uh, we started getting ready for a very small um, exhibition in uh, quite a small uh, little gallery in the Alexander Turnbull Library. Oh, sure, no problem. Thanks very much. Um, I am a lot more comfortable. Um, so uh, this, what you're seeing here, is just one of the things that Charlotte Darling, who was the research assistant on the project, did by way of getting ready for the presentation. So she was um, rummaging around through the Alexander Turnbull Library's collections primarily, but also to Papa's, to put together an exhibition the idea was that we were, we were going to actually try and cram this. I shouldn't use my language. What we, what we, what we were looking for was a wunderkammer. I'll use um, Sydney's language. So wunderkammer, it's, it's this kind of idea. This is Neil Partington. Uh, this, um, oh. This is the attic. This is the attic. This is Wellington Museum, um, just around the waterfront, up a few stairs. They, they pop their top floor full of stuff. And if you've never been there, um, I, um, I can't put in a plug for our exhibition at the Arizona Turnbull Library because it's finished already. But you could go up there and see their exhibition it's a wunderkammer. It's this idea that you just, you're a collector, you collect a whole lot of stuff, and then of course you don't, you don't, you, you want to put it all on display, so you just shove it all in there. And uh, these, these collectors, these, these um, people were, um, in many respects, the start of museums. Here we go. This is um, one of Sydney's favourite museums. Um, I've never been here. This is Pitt River. Museum. Um, look at the organisation. Look at how it's organised. I've just picked this one because I saw Captain Cook. But this is a kind of a thematic exhibition and actually led to some, a, a bit of a change. This is one of the museums that's cited in the, um, in anthropology in different ways of studying cross-cultural uh, artefacts. So we were going to build a Wunderkammer, um, but just before I leave, let's dive in there somewhere, hopefully near the... Oh, I've lost Captain Cook. Where are you there? Okay. So... Oh. There we go. 
There we go, that's a wunderkammer. That's a whole building full of cabinets, wunderkammer cabinets. So the theory then is that um, the way the theory works is that we kind of had this ant type of person that would go out and collect, 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 collect. And, and they, the ants would then organise their collections. Um, but as you can see in this, in this dialogue here, there's another way of looking at it, which is that, that it's a spider. This, this is a fictional dialogue between an ant and a spider. And the spider has this sort of relations and lays things out too. But the critical thing to understand here is that the, the, the web is just the way that enables the spider to move. That with the, with the web, if you capture the web, you don't actually capture the person. So coming back to what we were doing, we were trying to do an exhibition about William Colenso. Um, and this, I think, is the closest thing that I could find to Sydney's conception of what we were trying to do. That we were trying to, this is called a mesh work, that we were trying to um, do a thematic organisation of the life of William Colenso. Um, and I need to um, just ask you, if any of you know um, what uh, William Colenso was doing between 1852 and 1856. That is one of these big white spaces here. You see, he got um, tossed out of the church in 1852, and he came back as a politician in 1856. And there's very little known. So if you think of this as all of the different ways of tracking William Colenso's progress, then there's a big vacuum. And, and Sydney's interested in that theoretically and, and so on. So what she did, this is where it gets really weird, is she went to Mitchell Whitelaw, who's a real um, digital artist, uh, and he built this thing, a tool called Succession. And it um, generates um, things by pulling down images about New Newcastle on Tyne. So that's not, for me, a particularly evocative one, but some of them are really beginning of the Industrial Revolution sort of types of creations. That's more like it. And you can drill into that from the, the pics there. So she said, Reese, um, localize that. Bring it, repurpose it to be the digital component of the exhibition on Colenso. So, um, so we started. Now I'm going to start showing you what I was working on and talking about the process. So the computer side of it starts with these numbers here. Those numbers happen to correspond to a bunch of sets. Uh, most of them mine, but Charlotte's one, and also one that's been around for a while that was done um, by MTG in Hawke's Bay. So I started with I started with those two, and at some stage I got a chance to talk to Mitchell, and he said that he'd spent three months, I think it was, where he spent half his time writing code and developing it and changing it, and half of his time curating the images that his work drew on, in order to, um, to achieve the aesthetic that he wanted. Now, um, there are 
some computer scientists out there, presumably, who are quite happy with the word aesthetic. But for most of us, that's a little bit scary. And the idea that no one's going to give you a specification for what you're producing, they're going to expect that you go backwards and forwards between your data, what you mean you haven't got clean data. No, you, you select the data, you write the program, and out of that going round and round and what's in your head, you get to your goal point. Bit scary, bit scary, but I pressed on, we pressed on. So, next step is this. I had some tools that I needed for my, that horrid Angular that I was working with, and lots of XML because I was dealing with Digital New Zealand API. Um, and some bits and, tool, bits and pieces there that, that you will recognize if you're um, um, very um, long-sighted. So we won't dwell on that. Um, this, is the, this is half of it. This is the back room. This is what happens in, in um, this, uh, what passes for a server environment. Um, this is a shell script. Um, you definitely need grey hair for this. Um, um, if you're, it, I, I want to point that thing out up there. Up, up there, there's a strange string. That's the Digital New Zealand API. That's my personal API. One of the things that we bumped into was that there were some things that we could do online in an app, and there were other things that we couldn't. And anything that involved the API couldn't be done um, we couldn't give that away in a web app. So that's up there. Um, here we go. This is what the back, that back calculation produces. It produces a set of effectively digital New Zealand APIs. But it's been filtered. It's been filtered firstly on whether we're allowed to remix it. Um, um, as a consequence of that, um, the digital exhibition is not located in the Turnbull. It's, it's, um, it's probably closest to Te Papa, but there are only two or three things in, that come out of the Turnbull, um, and those are the things that they put into pilot releases to Flickr Commons and other places like that. Most of the Turnbull stuff they haven't sorted out copyright. And getting entangled in trying to sort out copyright for 100, 200, whatever, whatever that number was, was quite beyond the scope of, of what we were doing. So a bit of filtering. And um, some of these are a bit strange. Some of the, um, some of the um, resources that are uh, Digital New Zealand classed as images were web apps or, or actual HTML pages. And the, there was a bit of web scraping involved in getting a straight image out of what was supplied up by Digital New Zealand. That's the back end. The front end, well, you've seen the front end. It's a web application. It's delivered, I don't know if you can see it up there, but it's delivered by whiteyoutapress.gitlab.io slash unexpected. So it comes off a pipeline out of Git, that web app. And um, and the web app, of course, has all the Angular in it and the code. And I, I'm not going to drag you through this, um, but I wanted you to... Trust me, there's that word random in there, and that's the essential thing that's going on. So we're randomly selecting out of those resources that were um, kind of curated by me, mostly. Um, and then we're performing random operations on them. And the operations are happening in your browser and come from out of the operations that are provided by browsers through a set of operations called blending that happen on, on, um, on canvases, which are the, 
the viewing surfaces inside your browser. Okay, off the end of it. Um, off the end of it, we get unexpected. Uh, let's, while I just figure out a conclusion here, let's just try our luck. I want to mention just one um, little, well, um, the best thing about this, if you don't like it, you just push the button again. And then you have this marvelous thing, what's happening in my head? Why don't I like that? Why do I like that? What, what, how did that happen? But, but coming back to, to Sydney's purpose, the, th the thing is, is really to provide um, a new way of, of looking at those collections. Now, um, to be honest, I think most of the people who came into the, the little gallery struggled with what to do with the iPad that had been kind of nailed on the wall. And we didn't get the interaction right. There were actually too many totally unex well, unexpected for me issues in dealing with how to get people to interact with a thing on the wall. Um, I spent all my time trying to harden it so that it would actually survive to really manage to do much about how we interact with it. Um, really, really challenging issues. I, I shouldn't be let loose on any type of computing appliance that pretends to be a kiosk because I can make them go wherever I want. Uh, there are a few individuals who visited the Alexander Turnbull Libraries Gallery during that time that it was on who also know how to make iPads go wherever they want. And sometimes they took them to some um, um, uh, unsafe places, really. Um, scary. So where are we going from now? Where are we headed? Um, well, it was a tiny job that I never got around to, which was coming back and digging out a piece of work that was done for NDF in 2012. So in a similar way of uh, providing um, uh, a kind of random, thought-provoking way of looking at a, um, a collection. Let's see if this still goes. I'll just hit the make the magic button. There we go, floods. Oh, I want images. Okay, maybe now we can do a little better with that out of what we've learned. But what Sydney wants to do is um, actually take some of those images that Unexpected was generating and take them back to her letterpress and her other lithographs and her other uh, technologies and kind of um, how do you say it sort of um, back to the future so we've we've kind of gone to the future with the with this digital stuff she wants to take it back and have the the old machines turn out some of this new stuff. Again, just as totally different ways of interacting um, with the collections. Right. I got to the end. <laughs> Thank you for listening, by the way. Thank you. That was a beautiful journey. this one back on? Thank you. Um, yeah, that was, that was a beautiful journey that you took us on there. Um, just before I throw questions to the floor, I have one myself. Um, you're talking about Sydney wanting to take some of those images and um, turn them into 
physical images again. Um, when people are generating images through the web app, is there a way for you to save or export the things uh, you create? Uh, um, great. Okay. Uh, th thanks for that question. Um, I completely forgot one of my tabs. Um, two months ago, I filed an issue in my GitLab, allow a composition's URL to be saved and have it regenerated from that URL. Uh, I should have been able to do that in five minutes. It's, it's a r relatively straightforward refactoring of um, that Angular code. Um, but in the meantime, Angular's moved on. It's a whole new version, a completely different tool chain. Uh, but the plan is that that's going that's going to give it. So, so if you like, the random pushing the button is going to generate a URL, and you can bookmark that. And whenever you want, you can just bring that URL back to life in your browser, and the browser will um, will re recreate. So we'll put all the random bit into the generation of kind of like a code and then the browser can just rebuild that whenever you like. Um, uh, as you can see, I, I started, um, I've made the issue two months ago, I've created a branch, I've done lots of work, it's um, pretty pathetic at the moment, but um, it, it's coming, it's coming. It was supposed to be ready today, but Is there any plan to allow people to choose a few images to then generate the artwork? Or is it always going to be random? Um, the, the, with, the, with the caveats that, well, maybe it's time that we actually talk to the Digital New Zealand people. Um, this would be a strange but a wonderful way of of doing something new with the stories that people generate on Digital New Zealand, so that, that like that would be uh, that would be over to them, and of course I think they'd be um, most welcome to to do that. Um, halfway houses are a little bit um, tricky um, because the press doesn't really want to be in that particular thing, but. There are certainly possibilities. If, um, if Mitchell's okay with uh, releasing that code, um, I think it's probably time we had that conversation. Sydney had that conversation with Mitchell. And if he's okay with that, then we'll just be making the whole GitLab um, project uh, minus my API key um, available. So uh, um, I hope there's progress on that one way or another. Any more questions? No? Okay. Well, um, join me in thanking Reese again for this presentation. Thank you.